I built this bow. Keep watching to see how. What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make this bow out of a board from the hardware store. Before I start, if you like this video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you see when I release new content. As always, I will post timestamps in the description so you can jump around as you need to. Well, we got a little bit to do and a lot of time to do it in. Nope, nope, switch that. So without much further yammering on my part, let's level up this skill. Step one, choosing the wood. So while researching this subject, I discovered that there are three really readily available boards that you can find at a hardware store that'll make a good bow. Those being maple, red oak, and hickory. For this project, I bought an eight foot length of one by two maple. Now, no matter which wood you decide to go with, the most crucial aspect is going to be the grain. You want it to be as straight as possible, both on the flat and the sides of the board. This is because any grain that runs off the side of the board is most likely a place for failure. Read bow shattering and splinters in your eye here. I had to go through like 50 boards until I found one that had grain that ran from one end all the way to the other. But it is the most important step, so take your time. So on my board, the grain on the last couple of feet end up getting a little bit squirrely. But no matter. As I'm making a 68 inch bow, I simply remove the troublesome end. Now there are two sides to every bow, a belly and a back. The belly compresses when the bow is drawn, storing all that energy, while the back stretches out. I wanted to point this out because one side of my lumber's grain is not as perfect as the other, containing a couple of runoffs. By making this the belly, I can make sure it is the side that compresses, thus mitigating the risk of breakage at those points. Step two, marking the bow. All right, now that we have the wood, it's time to mark out the shape of our bow. Start by finding the exact center of the board, both length and width. Now we wanna find the center of the tips, but there's a problem. You see, most boards you're gonna find are gonna have a bow in it. Your job is to set the bow free. Different bow. So just measuring in using a ruler might find you the center of that space, but won't put you in line with the center point you put in the middle of that piece of wood. To get around this, I tied two weights to the end of a piece of paracord, and then draped the whole setup over the length of the board. I then adjusted the ends until the cord ran straight through the center mark. After marking all the correct positioning, I was able to pull a chalk line through the bow's true center. This way, when all is said and done, the string will line up exactly from tip to tip down the center of the bow. Now we need to measure and mark our handle. I started this by measuring out five inches on either side of the center mark, giving me a total length of 10 inches. I then marked two inches on either side for a four inch total space in the middle. This is gonna end up being where you actually hold the bow while shooting. Within that four inch space, come in from the edges an eighth of an inch on both sides and make a line. Finally, Connect the thinner four inch section to the outer 10 inch marks you drew earlier. Now that upper limb will fade down into the grip, then back out into the lower limb smoothly. We'll finish up this step by marking the limb taper towards the tip. Taper towards the tip. That one gets tricky. The tip. Measure out 15 inches from the end of the board and make a mark. Then at the tips, measure a quarter of an inch on either side of your center line. Now connect the marks together using a straight edge. This will leave us with a nice, gradual taper on each limb. Step three, rough out the shape. Now that we have the layout all laying out, it's time to remove all the unwanted wood. If securing your work with a clamp, make sure you use like a piece of leather or rubber or something to protect the wood. Using a small rasp, I started in on the grip, removing all material up to my lines. This left me with a smooth, even transition into the grip. I then started my way in on the limb tips with a draw knife and worked my way down to a block plane. Real quick note, the tools you use for removing this material is not important, so whatever you have that'll do the job, use that. This just happened to be what I had, so it's what I went with. Just make sure the limb transitions evenly the whole way, meaning you don't want like a sharp drop off where it's full board length and then it just drops off real sharply from there. You know, just make, it, make it smooth, make it nice. Nice. Once you're happy with the overall shape of the stave, flip it belly side up and start rounding it off by taking material from the edges. This should leave you with a D shape down the length of the limbs. Step four, backing the bow. So backing a bow is when you laminate another piece of material to the back of your bow to add structural integrity. 
I read that some board bows with like perfect grain don't really need to have this done, but I want it to be safe. Now, apparently there are a myriad of different materials you could use to back the bow. For this project though, I decided to go with rawhide because it's cheap and strong and I like how it looked. You wanna start with a container of warm, not hot, water. Add in your rawhide strips and leave them submerged for roughly an hour. While you wait, round off the sharp edges in the back of the bow a little bit with some sandpaper. Since we'll be gluing the rawhide to the back of the bow, we wanna rough up that surface to give it good purchase. Oh, that was a good rhyme. I'm a poet and I didn't even realize it. For this purpose, oh, that was another one. Purchase, purpose, on fire. For this purpose, I used a hacksaw blade. Simply scrape it across the length of the wood, leaving small scrapes for the glue to grab onto. Then clean off all the dust. Once ready, lay out the reconstituted rawhide on a towel to get rid of the excess water. Now, lay down a bead of glue along the length of the stave and spread it out evenly. For glue here, I'm using the Type-On 3 wood glue. You don't want so much that it's dripping all over the place, but don't be shy with it either. Now lay down a strip of rawhide along one of the limbs smoothing it out to ensure good contact and no air bubbles. Then do the same on the opposite side. Make sure you glue down where the two overlap in the middle. Again, look it over closely and make sure there are no air bubbles present. Then wrap the whole thing up with ace bandages or any other fabric strips you might have lying around. You want this snug, but it doesn't have to be super tight. I saw another bow maker do it where they took legs that they had cut off of some sweatpants and they just draped it over and put a weight at the bottom and that held it down too. I don't know, I just thought that was clever. Anyways, once that's all wrapped up, you need to walk away. The glue and the rawhide needs a good 48 hours to dry before you touch it again. You can pause the video. I'll wait here. All right, welcome back. You could have at least left food, just saying. Unwrap your little bow mummy and make sure everything is stuck down well. Now, using a rasp, scrape along the edges of the bow to remove the excess rawhide. This ends up with a pretty cool look and leaves you with the appearance of a custom fit piece. Now it's time to get into the real serious bowyer work here. Step five, tillering. Tillering is where you get a bow to bend evenly by removing material on the belly side. I started this process with a floor tiller. Simply bend the limbs against the ground and see where it looks stiff. Then remove any material from that spot until it looks like it bends more evenly. Once I'm satisfied with my floor tiller, I cut in the knock so I can string tiller it. You will find out about string tillering in a moment. Be patient, you will be doing it for a long time. To cut in the knocks, start by marking one inch down on either side of the bow tips. Then draw 45 degree angles from those marks converging on the belly. I then start the grooves with the saw blade and finish them up with a round chainsaw file. Once those are in, it's time to take the bow to the tillering tree. Pretty simple little device to make. I will post a link to directions on how to do so in the description. It's basically just a rope that feeds through two pulleys, one stationary and one with a hook in the end. The rope is then secured to an eye bolt. Place the bow into the shelf at the top and hook the pulley onto the tillering string, a paracord in this case. Pulling the rope flexes the bow and I can see if the limbs are bending evenly. Make sure you flex the bow a bunch of times first to get the wood fiber as used to the movement. This will go for every time you make a change to the bow. As soon as you remove some material, make sure you flex it a bunch of times first rather than just going for it full length. That could damage it. Here, notice how the left side hits that second line? Well, the right side doesn't. Also notice the limb bends here and is rigid here. Mark any bits that aren't bending with a pencil. That rigid area is where I'll start removing material. That's tillering. Repeat that process a lot. Take little bits of material at a time off, test it again in your tiller, go back, take a little bits of piece of material off again, test it in your tiller, back and forth. The goal here is, is for the bow to make an even arc when flexed. This way, the force of your draw is distributed evenly over the entire limb rather than just in one small area, which could cause a break. Once you have the draw distributed evenly across the bow, it's time to start approaching your draw weight and length. So bows have what's called a draw weight, which is how many pounds it takes to actually draw the bow. The draw length is personal to each archer. That's just the maximum length you as a person will draw that bow. This bow, I'm trying to shoot for a 50 pound draw weight, what I'm used to, at a length of 28 inches. If you're not sure of your draw length, here's how you figure it out. Simply take a length of wood, place one end in the area where your chest meets your neck, then hold it with your arms outstretched as far as it'll go and your hands flat. Where the very tips of your middle fingers are is your draw length. 
Once I felt the limbs were behaving, I strung the bow and checked for any twists by looking down the string. If when looking down the string you see that it's not exactly in the center, just remove a little bit of wood at a time from the side that it veers away from. Give it a few pulls and recheck it. Finally, after a long process of removing material and rechecking it, I reach my draw length, marked here by blue tape. There are little scales you can hook on to that whole process to see what your draw weight is, but you know, money. So I just compared this one's draw to a professionally made bow that I have that I know to be 55 pounds. And this feels pretty darn close to the same, so I'll call it 50-ish. At any rate, check this out. I made a bow and it works well. It draws smoothly, it's quiet, it's quick, and all that from a $14 piece of wood I bought at Home Depot. Actually, all in all, with the rawhide backing and the string, I'm probably looking about 50 bucks total for this bow. And it's my bow, it's custom to me, it's what I wanted. I'm, I'm really happy with this. And it's just seriously fun to shoot. Sorry, I'm gushing over my bow. I'm just, it's one of those things you make that you're just like, I, I made this thing and it works. I did this skill due to requests from the following skill monkeys. I love when you guys leave requests, so if there's anything you want me to cover, leave it down in the comments section and I will add it to the list. And once again, subscribe and like if you haven't yet, it really helps my channel out. All right, well I should be going. Me and my merry men have some rich folk to rob. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.